Hi, and welcome to this tutorial from cgcookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at modeling an entire male head within Blender. Now, this, tutor this tutorial is going to be split up into a series, with part one looking at the structure of the face and lying out the basic edge loops, part two going into the, to the nose, and then the eyes, mouth, ears, etc. So with each part just going into each specific part of the face, working on that, and then moving on to the next, within a final section looking at final proportions, any last words, etc. So let's just go ahead and get started here on part one. In this section, we're going to be looking at the edge loops and the structure of the face. So what I want to do is just create the basic edge loops that are going to outline the face. Now what this will allow us to do is then later in the next parts, just go in and start filling in the details without having to worry too much about the structure of our head. Now, if you're not familiar with edge loops, edge loops are essentially circles of edges um, or circles of faces that allow us to quickly edit and um, redistribute our faces any way that we need to. Now edge loops are es absolutely essential when it comes to animation and also good modeling. Uh, during animation, a model with good edge loops with a proper rig will deform very well, while one with bad edge loops or no edge loops won't deform hardly at all. And so edge loops are one of those things that as a character modeler, you de it's essential that you master. So let's just go ahead and get started. You'll notice that I've gone ahead and set up my front and side references. If you're not familiar with how to do this, please just go ahead and refer to my tutorial on CG Cookie on how to do on setting up background images within Blender. I'm not going to cover that right now due to time constraints, but if you need, just go ahead and go back to that tutorial and then you can get started in here. So first things first, I want to go ahead and just add a plane as we're going to be doing a poly by poly modeling technique. So you can just hit spacebar, add mesh, plane. Okay, now there's a couple things I need to do. You'll notice I have my plane object, but A, I want to add a mirror modifier, and then I also want to just scale it down and rotate it. So first, let's just go ahead and rotate it, which you can do by hitting R on your keyboard and hit Control to constrain it to increments. There we are. And then let's go into edit mode, hit tab, and then just hit Control R to add an edge loop here in the center. And you can hold down Control and you can lock the increments and position it right in the center. What this then allows me to do is select these two vertices over here by right clicking and right shift clicking on them and then hitting X to delete vertices. Now I want to add a mirror modifier such that I only have to work on one side of the face at a time. To do this, you can simply go down to your edit buttons down here or by hitting F9 on your keyboard and go to add modifier, mirror. Now you'll notice that we have a mirrored instance of our model over on this side. Now to do a couple of things, we want to go ahead and add do clipping, which makes it so that the center vertices can't move away from the center origin. It just locks them to that center. And I also want to hit this little circle here so that we can visualize our editing cage on both sides. And you can even edit on both sides. Okay, now we're ready to get started. I want to go ahead and set up our primary edge loops. So first I'm just going to hide the mesh just so we can see the reference. There's several key edge loops that we're going to be looking at. First off, the simple ones are going to be a loop around the eyes, mouth, and from the bridge of the nose down to below the mouth. Then there'll be one from the forehead, down along the eyes, next to the ear, and down to the jaw. And then the last one we'll be looking at is one starting at the chin, going along the jaw, up by the ear, around the ear, and to the back of the head. These are the loops that we're going to be looking at and the ones that we want to create in this first section. So let's just get right to it. Let's just hit Alt-H to unhide our mesh, and we can start modeling. So first, let's just go ahead and scale this down. We'll just hit S on the keyboard, scale it down to about that. Let's start with the loop around the bridge of the nose. So we can just move this in like so by hitting G. And then on the right side, hit G and Y to lock it to the Y axis and move it over to about the bridge of the nose there. Now let's zoom in and select these two vertices here. Now what I've done is I first hit Z to make sure I'm in wireframe view such that I can select any vertices in the back 
and hit B to box select and just drag over those top vertices. And then I want to just move back like that. Okay. And then let's just select these two vertices and we're going to now just start extruding. So I'm first just going to work on the front. So I'm going to just hit E to extrude, move it down like so, R to rotate, extrude again, R to rotate, extrude, R, extrude, R, extrude. So now you'll see we've got this loop coming down along here. Now we need to edit it on the side view such that it fits the face. So let's first just select these four vertices. Move them back to the, cor to the corner of the mouth. We'll select these two. Move them back. And then these four. It's like so and like so. Just get them roughly positioned. They don't need to be exact, we can get them exact later on. But you want them fairly close. Okay, now let's go ahead and go in and add the eyes. So to do this, I'm just going to position my 3D cursor, which looks like the crosshair, right here on the pupil of the eye. And then also right about here on the side view, such that it's positioned right on the eye. Now I want to hit spacebar, add, cir add circle and eight vertices should be enough. Hit OK. OK, now we'll have a slight problem if we just start scaling down. As you notice, it locks the vertices to the center. So to do fix this, I just need to turn off do clipping momentarily. Now I can just scale right down, about like so. And then I want to scale along just the Z axis, so I can hit S again, and Z, like that. Maybe scale it up slightly. Every time you scale, then just hit left click to confirm it, or E, or escape to uh, cancel it, or right click. Okay, now I want to position these like they need to be. So first, let's just start positioning them up from the side. We'll grab them one or two at a time. There we go, that looks about right. Okay, I'm going to adjust these slightly. There we are. Okay, maybe pull that up. Now I want to go ahead and select this whole loop, as I want a, a loop of vertices like this for each one, or a loop of edges. So I'm just going to select the whole thing by Alt, Shift, right clicking on it. On some computers, you can just alt right click. However, if you're working under Linux, alt right click tends to bring up a menu. So um, just alt shift right click will always work. So you can just use that or alt right click works to select, select the entire loop and hit E to extrude only edges and then scale down like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the loop for the mouth, which so now we can just Position our cursor right about the center of the lips. And we're going to hit spacebar, add circle once more, and eight. Now this time, I'm actually going to move away from the center slightly, and then I want to just delete these three inner vertices. So I can just select them, X delete vertices, like so. Now I want to select these again by Alt Shift right clicking, scale them down, move it into the center to lock it, and then I can just scale along the z-axis until I have a circle that roughly resembles the shape of the lips. Now we can reshape it on the side view. Now you'll have to compensate a little for the references since they don't line up exactly. Um, it's pretty tough to get references that line up um, even close to exact, but you know, you just it's one of the things with being a character modeler, you just you just learn to compensate for it. Okay, there we are. That looks about right. And so we'll select the whole thing again, hit E to extrude, scale it down. Okay, so you can see we're starting to get our loops. I'm going to be sure to save my file just in case I happen to have a crash. I think I need to edit this a little bit down here, obviously. There we are. Okay, so now for the last loop for this section, um, or no, excuse me, we've got two more. Next, we need to go ahead and add this loop here. So to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this, these two right here. So I'm just going to select it, hit Shift D to duplicate it, 
move it down, rotate it, just position it like I want, about there. Now, the reason that I didn't select this one, which is already nicely lined up in the center, is because uh, if I shift, if I duplicate it and then try and move it, I can't because of the do clipping. Now I can turn off do clipping and then move it, but that's just one extra step when I'm already going to need these vertices here. So instead I duplicate this one, position it where I want it, and then I can just extrude that one in. And now I have that center one. So there's just a little tip to kind of speed up your workflow. That may not have seemed like much, um, much of a speed increase, but when you're doing a lot of this, and you do it every day on model after model after model, it really starts to add up. So I'm just going to do this very quickly, but we just want a loop that comes from here, up, and to the forehead. So I just extrude, move over, extrude, extrude. So I'm just positioning them um, roughly with with some of the other loops, but it really doesn't need to be too too exact. Like you'll notice that while this edge and this edge line up, this edge and these edges um, don't work because there's not enough here. But later I can just very quickly add another loop there, and then all of a sudden it works. Um, so that'll be in one of the next videos when we start connecting everything. I just want to be sure not to get things too complex yet, or it's just going to turn into a mess to work with. Okay, so that gives us that loop. And now our final loop is I want to do this one along the jaw and back along the head. So I'm just going to again duplicate these two. Shift D, bring it back. Extrude them in to the center. And then just start taking these back. Okay, now here I want to rotate around the, the ear and to the back of the head. Now while this doesn't make any sense right now, it will later on once we start modeling the whole top of the head and you'll realize how much easier it is to connect things when you've got the loops like this. There we are. So that gives us the main structure of our head. Although actually I want to do one more. Let's just take this loop and take it over the top of the head just to give us a little more feeling for it. So we'll just take it like so. And you'll notice I'm just using the same tools over and over. Just grab, extrude, rotate, select. That's pretty much all I'm doing. You can see I have to compensate for the differences in the, in the references here, but that's all right. Okay, so now we can really start to see where we'll start go modeling, uh, really start going in with the detail. So like for the eyes, we can just start connecting all these, adding in the loops. For the mouth, just extrude those in more. For the nose, etc. So this will give us a nice nice starting point for the rest of the head and also let us make sure that we have all of our mesh structure down good. So I'm going to go ahead and end this section here and we'll get started on the next one. Hi and welcome back to part two of this video tutorial series on modeling the human head. Now that we have the edge loop structure of our entire head we can go in and start doing the actual detail work. In this section we're going to be looking at the eyes. So I'm just going to zoom right in onto my model Select it with right click and then hit tab to go into edit mode. Okay, now before we just start adding loops and vertices and whatnot, let's first take a look at the structure and make sure that we don't need to change anything. I'm going to zoom in on my other view here. I'm panning around by holding down the shift key and middle clicking, and then I can just zoom in with the scroll wheel or plus and minus on your keypad. Okay. So now looking at it from the side view, you can see we need to change a little bit. We need to move these couple faces, which, uh, sorry about that, I just, I changed to face mode by hitting control tab on my keyboard, which allows you, you've got vertice mode where you can control the individual vertices, edge mode for edges, 
and face mode for faces. And I like to switch these occasionally depending on what I'm doing. Since I want to move these two faces or those six vertices, it's a lot faster to go into edge mode or face mode and only select two things rather than vertice mode and selecting all six. So just little things like that help speed up your workflow. But anyways, I want to move just these two out since if you look at the profile, you can guess that the back of the eye here is going to be about right there rather than where it was back here. So I just want to move those out a little bit. A little bit of it is just knowing knowing your anatomy and a little bit is just, you know, interpreting your references. Okay, to make this a little clearer, I'm going to go into wireframe view by hitting Z. I'm just going to select these two vertices back here which are making up this fa this face loop. And then I'm just going to hit F or excuse me, H to hide them. This just allows me to see more clearly from the front view. Since we're not working with the back here, we really don't even need to see those. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's go ahead and start extruding the eye shape. So you can guess we're going to select this entire loop, which if you remember, you can just hold down Alt and right click on the loop. If you're running a Linux machine, uh, you may need to hit Alt Shift right click as Alt right click tends to bring up a window menu. Um, either one of them works though. So we want to go ahead and just extrude this once and what we're going to do is get the shape of the eye here. So we'll just hit E to extrude only edges, and then hit S to scale, and scale it down like that. Okay, so now we need to do a bunch of shaping. So I can first just select this one, pull it up, this one, and I'm first going to work on the loop that we just extruded, and then we're going to go back and work on the previous loop some more. Okay, so now I've got that, and that's as, about as close as I can get with the amount of detail that I, or the amount of vertices that I have from the front view. So now let's work on the previous loop. So we can see we maybe want to move these up a little bit. This back, maybe this down, like so. And then we'll move this one back as well. Okay, so from the front that gets pretty close. You can see we're going to need to add in another loop here, which we'll do that later, so we can get this nice divot here. But let's work on the side view a little bit. Now the side view is a little tougher, because since our references don't line up exactly, we're going to have to guesstimate a bit. But we can see we need to pull this one forward, this one forward, this is going to be up here, these maybe a little farther up even. So a lot of it is just, you know, lining up where, a lot of times where it looks like where it should be. Um, since, since our references don't line up exactly, you know, we can't just place it exactly. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of anatomy knowledge really comes in handy is knowing where to place things when your references don't tell you. Okay, so we're just gonna, you know, get these pretty close. And a lot of it will come in later when we start doing some final tweaking and we start really seeing where things go. Because um, once you have the final model built and it looks like an eye and it looks like a head, then you can start to see where things are wrong. In these preliminary stages, we just want to get it pretty close. We're not going for an exact science. Okay, so that's, I think that's close enough for now. So let's go ahead and just add in a couple more loops. First, let's go ahead and select this loop again by Alt, Shift, right clicking. And then we'll just extrude and scale, like so. And then let's hit, um, after left clicking, hit G and then Y to grab it and constrain it to the Y axis and just pull it back slightly. This gives our eyelid some depth. Okay, going back in. Now let's really start to add in the detail. Now keep in mind, we don't want to go too highly detailed before we model the rest of it, or it's just going to be a pain and we're going to lose control of our edge loops. But I want to add in enough that we get a pretty good idea. So I'm only going to add in a couple more loops, but one of them I want to do right here by hitting Control R, move your mouse over one of these edges, and left click, and then position it right in the center. And so what this will do is we can add a little more volume to the lower lid here. Bring this out. Actually bring that in a little. And then I'm going to reposition these slightly. This edge here, right here, minus the bottom, is going to define this crease. So this will be the inside of the crease. So then I'll add in, <coughs> excuse me, 
another loop up here, which will pull down over these vertices, which will actually make that crease. So I just want to make sure that these are nice and rounded and fit well. Okay, that looks pretty good there. A little more tweaking. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add in that, that next loop to add the crease, which we can do Control R again right here. There we are. So let's first do the top. So we'll first just select these two vertices here, pull them down. Now this one, actually we want to go back up because that's where the crease starts to even out, and so there shouldn't be much there. But this one is pretty sharp. Same with this one. About like that ought to do it. So if we leave that one, we can start to see about what it's going to be. Now keep in mind, a lot of it, um, at first, may not make sense to you because you know you see, oh, it's just a nasty sharp edge. You know that's that's not good. I need a lot more vertices in there. But keep in mind that later on, we're going to be adding what's called a subsurf modifier. So we're really going to have a lot more faces than this technically, but um, just not nearly as many actual vertices. It it'll just smooth the entire mesh out and make it nice and clean. So then a lot of this detail work that we're putting in will actually come to shape. Okay, that ought to do that. Now I need to be sure that this isn't too sharp. If if this were an elderly person, you know, this line right here might be pretty sharp. There'd be a pretty good crease there. But since, you know, it appears to be probably about uh, 28, 35, somewhere in that range, you know, they're not pretty pron very pronounced yet. It's a little bit here, so we can, you know, make this a little sharper, and that's all good. But down here, towards this area, it's pretty smooth. So we want to be sure to pull these down and make sure there's not too sharp of a crease. Okay, I think that'll do that. Now I'm going to go in and add one more loop in here, right here. This is just so that we can get this nice little dimple. About like that. Just help is actually a very key portion to getting a realistic eye and that a lot of people tend to neglect, but it is one of those, it's one of those little things in the face that really sets apart a good face model and a bad face model. So you know what, you want to be sure to add that in. And obviously, you know, there's not much here, you know, we really add in, we really need another loop here to bring this up slightly so it goes down like so. Um, we need another, actually another edge in here, so we've got this like dimple here and then this is actually the edge of the eyelid, but we're not going to be adding this yet. That'll be in the final or close to final section of this series where we really go in and add the final detail work. For now, we're really just focusing on getting the structure. Okay, so this pretty much does it for this section, but I want to do a little bit just to make it easier once we go, go to the next section, which, which will be the nose, and that's just to kind of prepare us for that. So since we added in, well, let me think about this. No, I'm actually going to leave that as is. I what, what I was going to do is add in another loop right here. But looking at this, seeing as we added one here, but looking at this, I think that if we bring these ones out, that ought to just about form the bridge of the nose. And then we'll add in another loop here later on. But for now, I think we'll leave this as is. Um, model wise, although just so we can start to see it and so we can get it closer, let's go ahead and add an eyeball. Um, just so we can really start, you know, start coming together more um, and make sure that our mesh is formed correctly. But I want to add this as a new object rather than in the same. So I'm going to first hit tab to go out of edit mode and then I'm going to position my cursor from the side view right about the corner of the eye and then you can see it's centered from the front and that's exactly what I want because I want the origin point, this little pink dot, to be right between the eyes, just in case I need to rotate it or something. So now we can just hit spacebar, add mesh, UV sphere. By default, you've got 32 segments and 32 rings. Let's take each of those down to 12. And hit OK. OK, now obviously this is way too big. And I also want to rotate this 90 degrees. So from the side view, you can just hit R, and type in 90 on your keypad and hit enter. Okay, now let's hit G, or no, excuse me. Let's actually just hit S to scale it down to about the eyeball size, which is about, about something like that. You know, we'd really need a dissected model to really know exactly, but 
you know, again, just a little anatomy knowledge, and you can get fairly close. Okay, now let's go and hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and hit G and X to move it over along the X axis. Now, let me step back a second. You Probably your first instinct would have been, oh, I need to go ahead and position this eye. So within Object Mode, you just hit G, move it over like that. Wrong. While this will work, we don't want to do it this way, um, and actually for a very good reason. Just like the rest of the face, the eyes are symmetrical. So why model two different ones? Or why you know, create one and then duplicate it and not have it perfectly positioned? Instead, let's just use the mirror modifier. So by moving in edit mode, we keep our origin point or our mirroring point um, right in the center such that when you add a new mirror modifier, it'll, it'll automatically add it perfectly positioned. Because remember, the mirror modifier mirrors the object around the origin point, which is placed wherever your cursor is at the time of the object creation. Now you can move that, but that's for another tutorial. So go into edit mode, hit G, move it over, get it roughly positioned. And I always like to use the rings on the UV sphere and the pupil to help line things up. About like that. And then we can move it back. Okay. Now is when we have to do a little tweaking. Since this is one of the reasons that I wanted to go ahead and add the mesh now, I can move it in a little bit. As you can see, it doesn't quite line up. If I move this back, you know, I've got a lot of intersecting intersecting edges and faces. So I think that's that's pretty close. We use a side view, maybe. Well, let's actually move it in about about there. So you can see we really need to bring this the eye mesh out. So first, um, one thing I do like to do is go ahead and add the mirror mo or the subsurf modifier and the mirror to the to the eye so it's nice and smooth, just so it's not distracting. So first, let's add the mirror modifier, and we'll turn on do clipping and this, and then we can add a subsurf modifier, which I'll just turn that up to level two. Turn on optimal draw, and hit set smooth. There we go. Th that way, it's just not distracting. So, leaving edit mode by hitting tab, let's now right click on our head model, select it, and go into edit mode. So now you can see that we need to modify our mesh. Now, rather than selecting you know, individual vertices or you know, a whole section at a time, I'm going to make this a lot easier. Instead, let's hit O and turn on the proportional editing tool, which you can see has been activated down here. You've got, and then you've also got your fall offs. What the proportion the easiest way to think of this tool is like a magnet. If I grab one vertice, it moves those around it, which is controlled by what I like to call the sphere of influence, which you can control with your plus and minus or your scroll wheel. The smaller it is, the less vertices. So only things within that original radius of the original position of the vertices selected will be transformed with a fall off, which is controlled here. So this makes it very easy to tweak this eye because I can just select a vertice and I move those out, and just like that, I'm almost done. So you just move it in until it lines up with the with the eyeball. There we have it. That's pretty much it. Heck of a lot easier than doing all of that by hand. And you know, we'll just tweak this a little bit. There we go. And, you know, obviously we'll probably tweak it a little more later on, but for a quick, you know, what was that, like 15 seconds? Not too bad. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave this section here. From here, we'll move on to the nose, and then the mouth, ears, etc. Um, and so, I hope that things are progressing well, and we'll see you on the next section.